Hello, and welcome to section three of this course, Structuring Around. In this section, we're going to look at the following structural patterns, starting with Model View Controller, or MVC. Then we'll look at Facade, Proxy, Decorator, and finally, the Adapter pattern. In this video, we're going to look at Model View Controller. We will cover what is the MVC pattern, an overview of Flask, a Python web framework, and an example of how to use MVC in Flask. So MVC is a UI pattern. It's intended to separate internal representations of data from the ways that it is presented to or accepted from the user. The idea is that domain objects, or the representation of data, should be completely self-contained and work without reference to the presentation. This means that it should be able to support multiple presentations, possibly simultaneously. One way to think about this is suppose you have some statistical data and it could be presented in a table or perhaps a bar graph or a pie chart. So you have the same data that you don't want to have to duplicate for each different representation, but it can support all the different representations. So how does MVC work in a web app? We start with a which maps the user request taken from the URL to a controller. This then uses a model to retrieve all of the necessary data. It organizes it, formats it, whatever it needs to do, and sends it off to the view. This then uses that data to render the web page. Okay, so talking of web apps, I'm gonna talk a little bit about Flask. This is a micro web framework for Python. It's called a micro web framework because it's very lightweight. It does not require particular tools or libraries. It has no database abstraction layer, form validation, or any other components where pre-existing third-party libraries might provide common functions. However, it does support extensions that can add application features. So it's quite flexible in that sense. Flask uses the Ginger template engine. This provides the ability to use Python-like expressions to generate HTML. So for example, you can inject values from declared in Python variables. Uh, you can use for loops, if and else statements, and so on. And we'll be seeing a small example of this later. So Flask is used by the likes of Pinterest and LinkedIn. Uh, when thinking about Python web frameworks, Django is often the kind of most obvious alternative. It's a much more feature heavy alternative. It provides a kind of all inclusive experience. You get an admin panel, you get database interfaces an ORM, it also provides its own template engine, which is quite similar to Ginger. But one of the great things about Django is that it's also powerfully configurable. So you could choose to use Ginger instead. And similarly, for many of the other out of the box defaults, you can override them to better suit either your personal preference or the system requirements. Okay, so let's have a look at a small example of how to use MVC in Flask. Okay, so here we have a very simple controller. You can see that we've defined the app root, which is the kind of Flask decorator for how you map a root to a controller. So in this case, our controller is example page. Uh, so as we mentioned, uh, Flask doesn't have any database abstraction. So here the model is essentially defined by the DB. So the first thing we're doing is getting the DB. And then we're executing a very simple query, which just gets all the entries uh, ordered by descending ID. So in a controller, you can get data and uh, format it or filter it as you like. In this case, we're just specifying sort of the order we want it in, but we're getting all of the data. And then finally, you can see that we're returning render template. Uh, and we're naming an HTML template in here. And we're passing in entries as what we've just fetched from the DB. So let's have a look at what example page does. Okay, so here is our uh, Ginger template. So as mentioned, you can kind of see already where we're using our Python expressions. So we start with a for loop for entry and entries. And then we're going to display in a list the title and text of each entry. So if you look at line four with using entry text pipe safe, this means that we're declaring this variable or this string HTML safe. You can also see that we have an else statement uh, this will get triggered if there are no entry, entries in entries. In this case, we just print no entries yet. And you have to, um, so in Ginger, you have this concept of blocks. So you could have a for block or an if block. In this case, we have a for block 
um, and you have to make sure that you end each block, otherwise the uh, template will not generate correctly. So you can see that this is kind of how we've separated the data from the controller from the view. And in this case, we looked at a simple get request where you get some data and display it. But creating or updating data follows the same pattern. The request comes from the router, the controller will handle it, and it controls if and how it updates the model.